We've brought you here today to hear the tale of Big Roo, the free roaming rooster. <laughs> Big Roo, free roaming rooster. Big Roo, free roaming rooster. He pecked the eyes out to get to the brains because that's what he likes to eat. Big Roo, Big Roo, Big Roo. <laughs> One day he roamed a little too freely. The song got more entertaining knowing that it was killed in the end, the, the rooster, and whacked in the head. By good old boy. So, oh, yeah. do you have a verse for that, Matt? <laughs> Not at the was... moment. And then and from the out day. of the cabin, old Joe came with his killing stick. He saw Big Roo come and turned him. That's a word I just made up on the quick. Turned him. <laughs> turned him. And, it's, he and then he like hit that. Big Roo in the head with the Big Roo stick. Matt, it wasn't a cabin, it was a trailer. Welcome to another episode of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on this What happened to your hippie hair? You went to the bathroom and now you lost the hippie look. <laughs> Just realized. You All right, Greg. Greg, why don't you start off the show then? You just did. Didn't you just say what you needed to say? Welcome. No, I haven't. I haven't finished the usual. Continue the but... usual spiel. Tonight's guest is Danny DeVito. <laughs> is that tonight's guest is Uncle? No, I, but yeah, right. He looks like Danny DeVito, but not the current Danny DeVito, but the Danny DeVito from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's, the cuckoo's Nest. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's definitely it. No, I was like, where am I saying? Out. Or not Danny DeVito, but the 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 old guy. In One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, who talk kind of like a baby. But check this out, Brendan. This is my impression. Right. I'll have I'll have right. to find Watch. his picture. I gotta my head and then like. He's doing Vincent D'Onofrio right now from Full Metal Jacket. I am in a world of shit. <laughs> that looks scary. All right, welcome to another episode of the Law Offices Quibble Squabble and Vicker on this August seventeenth, two thousand twenty-two. I have returned from my trip to Canada, so that's why we're going live today. Traitor. We'll not, we'll not <laughs> what? We'll not be talking about Canada in general, but our client for today is, that's nuts, you fruit. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble and bicker. Let's get started. You know me as the better looking one at the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. But I assure you I have more than a pretty face. As you know, I also recently relocated from Florida, which is one of the reasons I'm a proud patron of today's sponsor, Racists for Refugees. Tonight, in cities all across the country, racists will lay their tired heads down on their pillow and wonder what freedom does, or is, or went or something. Anyway, they will drift off to sleep wishing they could be somewhere better. And with that idea, a movement was born. Because somewhere outside of Syria, Afghanistan, Myanmar, or Ukraine, someone else goes to sleep wishing they could be someplace else. Where someone isn't bombing them or trying to cut their head off. So what Races for Refugees does is a simple swap. We take the refugee and the country they are fleeing from. It's one of our 100% a-grade, USA, MAGA-loving racists. Truly a win-win. You can help by sending your non-perishable and non-fungible contributions to Races for Refugees, PO Box 439, Portland, Oregon, 97211. Also, stand by for a big announcement from their sister organization, Put Packs of Wolves in U.S. Cities Now. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I'm confused. Because is it a win-win? Like, wouldn't these MAGA hat guys be like, I'm not America. I want to be in America. That's the win. That's the, that's for the us, irony. The win. For us. But not I don't care about them. Okay, so it's a win-lose win. No, we win and the refugee wins. That's the win-win. We don't really Refugees care about Refugees win because they get to come to America where they're not getting right. bombed. We win because we get the... We you know. win because the MAGA guys are gone. But the right. MAGA guys don't win. So this, it's a win-lose win. Okay. 
they're not happy to be out of America. I'll, 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 I'll rework the script. Right, it's because they're in one of those shithole countries, as their leader has called exactly. them. Exactly. They don't want to be in a shithole country. Right. Yeah. But they consider ours to be one now anyway, because that's what the whole movement's all about. It's because the mud people. <laughs> the mud oh, people? Shit. We're getting kicked off YouTube what, now. What are what, the mud people, is, Greg? Is that from Dark? I, I don't even want to describe it now, because we're getting kicked off YouTube. In um, the books, the Chronicles of Thomas Coven of the Unbeliever, there literally is a race of people that live in mud. Are they called the mud people? I don't, know, I don't remember what they're called. They could be called mud. I think they were made from clay. So Wait, who are the, what are those books? I know the, that name. Who wrote those? There's a guy named Stephen R. Donaldson wrote the books. Yeah, the I remember Chronicles those. Of, it was about a guy who's a leper and he goes into some other I never world. read them. Oh. I remember those those were pretty big in sci fi. Yeah, well he was still making sequels up until like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Even though they came out like in the eighties. So he's a racist, you're saying? Did we no. shoot them off unknowingly? He, he might be a racist. I mean you, you never find out what people's colors are in these books, so it's very possible. He could be racist. I don't know. He's yeah. definitely got a thing for lepers though. That's creepy. That's his fetish. <laughs> well, that's his main character is a leper. So yeah. there's that anyway so our client for today thank you very much for funding for our sponsor though brendan do appreciate that um hopefully people will also appreciate it. and uh, anybody who's watching on youtube right now which is probably sanchez el dorado or shandy pants um put a question for greg now for later when we go to ask greg so we can have it in time as opposed to waiting till later all right yes do that on youtube ask like, Greg a legal question subscribe. I like want to interrupt subscribe. real quick. Ring My... the bell. Ring the bell for notification. Knock My the brother. triangle. Go get lunch. Open a bag of chips. These are all My... things required on YouTube. I just want to say real quick, my brother uh, wants to say hi to you guys, and he can't wait to meet you when he comes up to Portland next time. When's he coming? He's been here like 10 years because he's a new convert. He's been slowly watching every show. He's oh, up no. to last season. Oh. He's basically, in six months, listened to... A hundred episodes, or whatever we've done it. Wow, that's more than you've listened to, Greg. No, I listen to every one. I, I actually do. <laughs> wow, just to see what a prick you are to me, Matt. I'm like <laughs> writing down like it's my all people, evidence on my enemies list. Like, oh, another reason why I'm going to get mad. Matt dear, is not nice to me. <laughs> dear diary, <laughs> dear diary. Brendan said, said I look like Danny DeVito. I don't think I do. <laughs> I That's definitely got to find the picture of the guy that I'm thinking of, but it would totally match. You guys would go, oh, yes, you would definitely know the guy I was talking about, if mm. I could think of his name and if they had a picture of him. Anyway, so our client for today, that's nuts, you fruit. That came about because I was having a conversation with one of the kids here about what a cashew is, you know, and that a cashew is part of a, a fruit called the cashew. And then I started digging a little deeper into the definition of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds, and it turns out... Nuts are fruits. Nuts are fruits. But all not nuts. only that, fruits are vegetables. So they're all the but same thing. No. Not all the time. So I was Some right the whole time when I was a kid. There's meat and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that, yes. But uh, so where I got really confused today was I decided to look up the term vegetable. And the term vegetable essentially <laughs> means Parts of plants that are consumed by humans or other animals as food. So that can include the flowers, fruits, stems, leaves, roots, and seeds. Everything. So a fruit is a vegetable. A, vegetable. a seed. A seed. Is a vegetable. So a fruit is a special type of vegetable. A seed is a special type of vegetable. All yeah, things are vegetables. A subset. <laughs> Yeah. Right, but there's like there's the taxonomy of it would be like that, right? Yeah, that's kind of how it started, but you know, there's more specific terminology. So, the exact definition of vegetable, this is from Wikipedia, may vary simply because of the many parts of a plant consumed as food worldwide: roots, stems, leaves, flowers, fruits, etc. That's the broadest definition, but more specifically, a vegetable, a secondary meaning, I mean, is the edible part of a plant, but a more precise definition is any plant part consumed for food that is not a fruit or seed, uh, but including uh, mature fruits 
that are eaten as part of a main meal, which confused things further by saying, including mature fruit. Mature. <laughs> so Am this I falls a, outside of de whoa, definitions whoa, 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 are edible whoa, whoa. fungi like mushrooms, edible seaweed. That's a vegetable. They're not parts of plants, but they're often treated as vegetables. So here's the funny thing is where this kind I of just, all starts mm -hmm. is that the question of whether the tomato is a fruit or a vegetable was taken up by the United States Supreme Court in 1893. Why would they waste their time doing that? Well, they didn't have anything to do. Either Why way, well, it was in 1893, so they were dealing with Civil War issues, and maybe people were trying to get away with certain things regarding tomatoes. I don't know. But they it say that it. tomato is correctly identified as, and thus taxed as, so it's probably a taxation thing, as a vegetable. But for the purposes of the tariff of 1883, but because of the purposes for the tariff in 1883 on imported produce. However, the court acknowledged that, botanically speaking, a tomato is a fruit. Botanically speaking. It's not. I well, mean, botanically, you know, it's a fruit. When you because, want, like, a sweet fruit, oh, I want a desserty thing, you're not going to grab a tomato. So, as far as I'm concerned, right, I don't but give a shit that... about what scientists say. <laughs> I, I do it. So, you, are, uh, you should have your MAGA hat on, then. No, yeah, I don't. Because you just said you don't give a shit what scientists say, Greg. On this issue, I don't. I'm sorry. Every, anyone would be like, hey, you got any fruit? Here's a tomato. Be well, like, well, here's a definition you. of a fruit, like a difference. So a fruit hey, develops see. A fruit develops from the flower of a plant. Right. Yeah. While well, well, the other them. parts of the plant are categorized as vegetables. So fruits contain seeds, while vegetables can consist of roots, stems, and leaves. Yeah. Right? But what's actually a seed, right? So a seed is a small edible plant enclosed in a seed coat. It's an egg. It's seed a most, coat egg. Most nuts are seeds, but not all seeds are nuts. But so nuts should... generally are fruits that have a hard outer shell that doesn't crack open naturally. So a walnut is a fruit, you're saying? Yes. A That's walnut? not true. Or no, it's a I true just... nut. No. You're a true I nut. I just say that. But I don't accept it. Anyone like, listening no. at this to this podcast at this point is <laughs> a, true a fruit nut. or a true nut. But, <laughs> yes. I, but I want to say common knowledge, I think, is the best way to go here. Like, just what do people say when you have a, I want a nut. Here's a walnut. If somebody, if I if I said, hey, I want some fruit, somebody handed me a walnut, I'd slap them and be like, fuck you. All I right. said a fruit. Greg, See, it's you like, shouldn't be slapping people regarding nuts, for one thing. But re according to I, the I Forest Maybe. Service... Maybe the you just slap the people about nuts. <laughs> or you just slap people who are nuts. Right. All right. According to the Forest Service, nuts are actually fruits. They're of defined course. as dry, single-seeded fruits that have high oil content. They're usually enclosed in a leathery or solid outer layer, which definitely is the definition of Greg. In botany terms, nuts are strictly a particular kind of dry fruit that has a single seed, a hard shell, and a protective husk, which is more of like my definition. So, I'm a banana. <laughs> you're a not banana? a dry I, fruit, is what you're saying. Is banana, I'm a, is I'm a banana wet fruit. Nut? <laughs> what? Is a banana a nut? No, it's a berry. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a it's a legume. No, it's not a legume. Banana so, is a, a banana is a berry, right? You're blowing my mind right now, Matt. Like all of this is just this is what the fuck matter. is a banana? A banana is what? Come on, <laughs> it's doctor. tasty. It is yeah, tasty. So what? You want to know the definition of a banana? It's a fruit, right? Please tell is me. Is it a fruit? Because if it's not a fruit, I'm just like it, I'm gonna just go a to banana bed. is a elongated well, a banana apple. is both the fruit and the plant. So well, what are we talking about? Wikipedia says the banana it's, fruit they eat. It's an elongated edible fruit. Botanically, it's a berry. All right, but according to the dictionary, a banana is a long, curved fruit which glows, grows in clusters and has soft, pulpy flesh and yellow skin when ripe. Or two, it's the tropical and subtropical palm-like plant that bears bananas, having very large leaves but lacking a woody trunk. But berry is a subset of fruit, so. Brendan's saying, yes, it's a fruit, but it's bear a berry. It's specifically a berry. So if I ask for a berry... Well, what the hell is the definition of a berry now? See, this is the rabbit know. hole we're going in. But if I ask for a berry smoothie at a coffee house, and they give have... me a banana smoothie, I'd say, fuck you. That's not a berry. You have There's no fucking way a banana is a berry. It's a berry. Strawberry. Well, technically. 
But this is why scientists, I'm putting on a mega hat now. Wait, do I have one? <laughs> I have one around here somewhere. It's like, no, fuck science on this. It's just what we have defined as fruits, nuts, and berries is what we should go by. Tomatoes are in the vegetable section. Fine. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on the fact that there's at least two sections. One section of sweet edible plant stuff, which generally is fruits. Yeah. And non-sweet edible plant stuff like broccoli and carrots. Yeah, beets. I mean, because then you get into potatoes and they're not technically either. They're a tuber. You know, they're a root. But it's edible plant. Tomato? No, potato. Oh, potato. So potato, potato is tomato. So, right? so a tomato is also a berry. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It is so, a berry. What is a potato then? What is a what, potato? What is a potato? What is it classified as? That it's is a, what you are after many drinks, Greg. It's a tuber. Right now. It is a, it is a growth on the a root tumor. system. It's a tuber. <laughs> you are a growth. I mean, you, you grow potatoes from potatoes. Sorry, so did you say it's nightshade family? That was the word I was looking for before. Nightshade. Anyway, so potatoes is a starchy plant tuber, which is one of the most important food crops cooked and eaten as a vegetable. Mm-hmm. As yeah. a vegetable. So there you go. As it's a, it's a, it's a root thing. A, like a carrot is a root thing. A uh, turnip. Uh, those turnips? I don't know. Yeah, they're underground. They're underground, right? Turnip, they're turnips, underground. radishes. Yeah, they're all root. Parking garages. But they're a phylum of the genus of vegetable. Yeah. They're still part of vegetable. All right, so, so a tuber is a much thickened underground part of a stem or rhizome, like the potato, serving as a food reserve and bearing buds from which new plants arise. Right. So that is a tuber. So, if you so, plant, it's, so it's part. It's a, it's the under. It's an underground part of a stem. Yeah, but I'm saying if you take a potato and you plant it, you just bury a potato in the backyard, it'll grow a potato and make right. more potatoes. If you cut off. Greg's head and plant that in the backyard. <laughs> but you can't do that with a banana. You can't take a banana out in the backyard and bury it and grow a banana tree. I've proven this. <laughs> I'm just a well, it's because a banana's a, a berry. It's not a tuber. <laughs> but they're all vegetables. I should be right. Able- Every fruits are vegetables. I'm just saying I should be able. If I wrote the code, I would be able to plant a, a, a head of lettuce and grow lettuce. Like and by a- the way, a coffee bean is a berry. I think I heard that. It's not a legume. It's still stupid, but I heard that. That's stupid. It's a legume. It's a bean by (laughs) No, I think it is a berry. No, it's just shaped like a bean, but it's actually a seed. So a berry, there's two definitions of berry. A berry is a small, roundish, juicy fruit without a stone, or it's any of various kernels or seeds, such as the coffee bean. So it makes me wonder if corn is a berry. Corn is a fruit. It's a kernel. No, it's a general. <laughs> it's, it's a lieutenant kernel. It's a kernel. Well, all right, I'm going to do a definition of... It's an attache. Corn kernel. General. It's a... Right. It's a way to use marketing in digital form. All right, so corn kernels are the fruits of corn. So it's a fruit? It's a fruit. That's what the, you eat. The corn kernels are the fruits. And that's what yes. you eat. Because so that's a, what you eat. When you're eating corn, you're eating a fruit. But yes. corn in and of itself is a grain. The cob? I don't know. That doesn't I'm, make I'm like thoroughly confused now. I know. That it's like, that's why we just have to go with common sense and just be like... There is no common yeah, sense to this, Greg. There is. Corn is a vegetable. There's not. You eat it with dinner. You don't it's, eat it for dessert. It's you don't eat it when you want a snack. I'm just saying, but by definition of functionality, biologically speaking, it's a fruit. Yeah. But you're right. You wouldn't, you know, I used to tell, I, when I was teaching Bridget how to play Dungeons and Dragons, I told her, look, because we were talking about intelligence and wisdom scores, you know, for your player. And I said, intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. <laughs> and that handled her on the difference between the two. I think I have wisdom that. There's a third part of that saying, but I can't remember what it is. I don't know. The to the Dungeon Dragon saying, don't put tomatoes in your anus? 
No, that's, that's a different one. Yeah, you shouldn't do that either. That's good but, advice. you know, I decided to look up what cereal was, too, because you're saying that corn is a cereal grain. So a cereal is any grass cultivated for the edible components of its grain. Oh, if but you're... Botanically, a type of fruit called a caryopsis. Okay. So now cereal is a fruit. Oh, what? <laughs> what? Ridiculous. These scientists. <laughs> they just round them up and shoot them all. They're just confusing everyone. All right. What the you hell know, is, I what think, is I, grain? I think the key, here, the key here is determining who has the right authority to make these classifications. And I'm going with not these guys. I'm kind of on Greg's side of people who eat this stuff should call it what it is to them. Yeah, the guy at Safeway in charge of the produce department. Yeah, tr take his word for it. You, you, you always you always make a user interface work for the user. If you made the developer what made the developer happy, and you put that out to the public, no one would use your software. You know what I mean? All right. So I looked up grain now. So <laughs> grain is a small, hard, dry seed with or without an attached hull or fruit layer. That's oh, walnut. I think I'm a seed. <laughs> I think that describes me what you just read. And a grain crop is a grain-producing plant. So I think that's where I've kind of lost myself. Is like forgetting, I forgot about the word plant. So everything comes back to a plant. Mm -hmm. So it's the edible things that are parts of plants that are the fruits and the vegetables and the seeds and the nuts. Unless it's a mushroom, because a mushroom isn't a plant. It's not a plant? All right, well, now we have to look up what the definition of a plant is. Thank you, Brendan. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you for that additional rabbit hole. I do I just, almost accept that, yeah, mushrooms are so different than any other plant. Well, well they're not. They're, yeah, they're a fungi. They're, they're, That's they're what I mean. Their own thing. Yeah. But isn't but a fungi a plant? No. It's a different Why isn't it? It's, it's a different kingdom. It's a whole different... Biology-wise, it's a whole thing, yeah. All right, a plant is a place where an industrial or manufacturing process takes place. That's the wrong plant, bro. Oh. No, we don't need that now, Matt. The uh, company has 30 plants in Mexico. That's but not is a lot the, of plants. But is what's inside of that plant edible is the real question. Well, that would make it a seed. Plants <laughs> is it, an FBI if, informer in the mafia. That's a plant, too. <laughs> but you can't eat it. For dessert or main course. All right, a plant is a living organism of the kind exemplified by trees, shrubs, herbs, grasses, ferns, and mosses, typically growing in a permanent site, absorbing water and inorganic substances through its roots, and synthesizing nutrients in its leaves by photosynthesis using the green pigment chlorophyll. A plant mushrooms have no, yeah, mushrooms have no roots, right? They got no roots. They have, um, I forget what they call them. And they, they have, have a little, chlorophyll. They have the little tentacles that go through the, the funguses. I spent a whole bunch of time with dagging yeah. on fungus. They're amazing. So uh, fungus is, uh, or fungi is any of a group of spore producing organisms feeding on organic matter, including molds. That's like black mold, right? Black yeah, mold including molds, fungus. yeast, mushrooms, and toadstools. Yes. But Why do we eat them? Quick question, though, Greg. What's the difference between a mushroom and a toadstool? A toadstool is uh, used by witches in their ceremonies as poisonous. Oh, really? That's the difference? Yes. It's, and it's the witch thing. Because the toads poop on them, and it makes them toxic. <laughs> the toads poop on them? Yeah, they're fecal matter. You're eating toad shit. They're... <laughs> Why did Brendan go all chipmunky on us? I think he likes that particular one. <laughs> I think that's why. All right, so know. some toadstools are poisonous, some aren't. That's true. But it doesn't really say what the difference is. So the difference is toadstool is the spore-bearing fruiting body of a fungus, typically in the form of a rounded cap on a stalk, especially one that is believed to be inedible or poisonous. So mushroom is a fungal growth it typically takes the form of a domed cap on a stalk with gills on the underside of the cap. So mm -hmm. All those gills. like striations? Mm -hmm. no, no, gills, Greg. The gills. They're not striations. They're gills. gills of my life. Fungus or fish? Gills. Some yeah. magnificent gills. gills lots of very, very tiny men named Gilbert that they put under the cap 
Gil Gerard from Buck <laughs> right. Exactly. Every time you open up a mushroom, it's like, hey, I'm Buck Rogers. Eventually, Greg always gets back to Buck Rogers. There's always a point somewhere <laughs> along the lines where Greg winds up with Buck Rogers. Bitty, 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 bitty. I, I thought I thought the bottom of that rabbit hole was uh, Richard Gere and the gerbil. That seems to always be the... That's where... a good point. Yeah, it's that or, or a wildebeest is involved. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just know that every... It's like, you know... Reading comments in, on a YouTube video. Eventually, it's I'll, just. I'll, I'll get a message for gerbil soon and what you're here. Believe me. So, is I'll a gerbil a fruit? Just so well, you all know, he'll eventually get back to the gerbil. I will. I'm keeping it alive, the rumor. That's good. Which rumor? About Richard Gear and the gerbils. Oh. The rumor. The one that, that was rumor. spread by Sylvester Stallone because they didn't get along on the movie they made together. Do you know that's how that rumor started? No, I did not. That so was uh, just, so Stallone? Just, yep, Stallone started it. Well, you know what it was? Because Richard Gere was way prettier and better looking than Stallone. So I'm sure he was like jealous. And yeah. Resentful. I'm going to make up shit about Richard Gere. And also about you, because you're the best looking member of Corpus Bell and Victor, apparently. <laughs> so now I'm going to make up shit about you, because I'm like, yeah. ugh. That irks me. Mm -hmm. I thought I was the handsomest member. Look at this. Yeah, no, you're doing good. You've got you've got a certain character actor charm. I well, I don't have a girlfriend anymore, and I don't care. So I'm like, yeah, my I know how that feels. <laughs> you, it's not that you don't have a girlfriend, Greg. You don't have a domestic abuser anymore, is what you mean? Yeah, but yeah. let's not get into that. But um, but look at this. <laughs> no, look at look how hard, bad, horrible I look without my beard to cover this shit. It's like, ah, mm, it's, it's all right. That's quite. It's funny how your head is developing into the shape of a pear. Yeah, that's what happens when you get obese. <laughs> Not you, though. You have the face of a thin man. It's, like, so weird. You're as big uh, as me, but you, your I'm face... Big, I'm bigger than you, Greg. Well, you're bigger than me, but your face still has, like... You don't look... Like, if you just saw you from the neck up, you wouldn't be like, oh, this guy's huge. So you Somehow, your head and your face don't look like you're obese. Wow. If I only I could I get the rest of my body to do that. Yeah, figure that out. I don't know. I Eat don't more fruits and legumes and nuts. <laughs> Eat some seeds. Dude. Everything's a fruit. Everything's, everything's a vegetable. I everything's thought. a vegetable. Yeah, everything's, everything's a vegetable. A vegetable. Except meat. things, except those things that you eat that are sweet, and those are fruits. Yeah, and, um, and, fruits, are, and some fruits, fruits are sweet, berries. Though. Some fruits are berries, but a berry is never a vegetable. All right, so this is the guy that Greg is reminding me of. Oh, that one. I, no, but show the Danny DeVito one. I think he's yeah, way DeVito. better than me. What's that? I know that guy. He's a character actor, right? Sidney yeah. Lassick is his name. But he was the guy from uh, from uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, there, but, there, were, there was worse pictures of him, but... Um, was I'm he not, like a little nebbish guy? No, like, no what, like, when Greg needs to do is Greg needs to do... The, the character was always like, hit me, Jack. Jack, hit me. Hit me, Jack. Wasn't <laughs> yeah, that Danny DeVito's character? That's Danny DeVito, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hit me. No, no, no. You, you, was that guy, Matt? What was his character? Was he like a little nebbish? Who'd just be like shy and be like, e -e 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 -e. like. Well, I can't remember. I, you I know, I don't him. remember either. He was, he was kind of a sad sacky type, though. You know, so which We're totally all kind fits. Of sad sacky. <laughs> well, that's definitely me. Kind of fits within. We'll try this picture. See if this one's. No, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong. Well, one I definitely too. recognize him. I just oh, there's a pie. Oh, a that one. Pie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's totally whiny. He's just like, ew. Ew, I don't There's like it. Shit. I just want to watch the World Series. Yeah, don't that's the one. Check. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember him now. <laughs> but, but he wants me to look up Danny DeVito, so I'll we'll look up. Danny. Oh, God, he's so cute in that movie when he's young. Mm -hmm. That's like the yeah. only movie when he's young. Like, I don't think yeah. he did anything like five until six years later in the late 70s. He's so like, angry. It's it's weird how many of the people in that movie went on to do other things, and you're like, oh, but way later, <laughs> but way later, like like you go, you then you go, that movie was like 15 years ago. But, I can't yeah. believe that Native American guy never got another role, as far as I know. He was amazing. Well, he didn't do much talking. No, yeah. I know, but he was such a he makes the movies such a great presence, you know. Right, but maybe he couldn't act worth a damn. Yeah, you know I mean? that's so true. 
he could lift served. a fucking what? What did he lift? A refrigerator and threw it to the window? No, yeah. it was a water fountain, wasn't it? Yeah, I think was it was a water, water fountain? fountain. Yeah, yeah, it was because like he had to rip it out of the wall and then he yeah. had to chuck it through the window. I want to watch that movie right now. Let's just watch the movie and talk about it. I forget about the stupid topic. <laughs> I don't think this is a stupid topic at all. It's totally gotten us like uh, it's, it is pretty fascinating. Like it's just, it's crazy that all these things are like oh bananas and berry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I never think, would have thought I, that. I think this is one of those times where you just go whatever. Guy that gets paid money at some place to. That's not him from. That's old Danny DeVito. Though. That is that is old Danny. He was yeah, so but, baby faced. But you're but you're old Greg, so that's yeah. How I it know. Fits. I'm just saying, and he was so kind of cute and baby faced in one flew over a cuckoo's nest. It's kind of funny to see it. Well, now. yeah, but he wasn't wearing glasses then, which you're wearing, so it doesn't quite work, you know. No. It, not really. It don't. But anyway, so we've uh, we've reached the point of uh, waspy soda pop time. Waspy so, soda pop. Time for a a new, a new thing from Wasp. I'm so curious to see what's on sale at Safe Mart. <laughs> I think a... you're gonna like. I think you're gonna like Safe Mart's product for today. At Safe Mart, it's a Safe Mart. Come to Safe Mart and be safe. Safe Mart is a proud sponsor of Food Is For Eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Today's special: pig's blood cake. Five sticks for ten dollars. Come get some at Safe Mart. Be safe. Food is for eating. Food is for eating. Food is for eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Hey there, everybody. This is Waspy Soda Pop with a brand new episode of Food is for Eating. I have for you a recipe that is popular all over Mexico, and I'm bringing it to you here today so you can make this at home. You're going to love this. This is my super serious key lime pie. Here are your ingredients. First, you want to get a pre-made graham cracker crust. You can get that at Safe Mart or any other local grocery store, but Safe Mart is the best. And one tablespoon of lime zest for your filling. Plus, you need like a half a teaspoon for the topping. You'll need that later. You want three egg yolks. I recommend chicken eggs. If you go for ostrich eggs, you're going to wind up having probably too much yolk. And then you know what happens? The yolk's on you. Ha ha ha. <laughs> then you get one 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, half a cup of lime juice from about four to six limes. You get a quarter cup of Ready Whip or some other whipped cream. I mean, I'm sure you've gotten some of that before. Don't use like the cheese whiz stuff because that makes a whole different pie. Then you want to get four aluminum house keys. Carefully shred those. All right, now we have our directions. You want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Put the egg yolks into a medium bowl using an electric misker or you can whisk it by hand beat until the yolks thicken and lighten up a bit in color that'll take about three minutes beat in the lime zest and the sweetened condensed milk for about another two minutes whisk in the lime juice until smooth add the shredded house keys stir that up then you want to pour the key lime pie filling into the pre-baked pie crust pour the filling into the prepared graham cracker crust and then bake it at three i think i just said that didn't i i said pour it and then pour it just do one of the pourings. If you pour it twice, one of those times, there won't be anything to pour in. After the pouring, you want to bake that at 350 degrees in the middle rack of your oven, not something else. I know where your minds are. For only 10 minutes till the filling is just set, remove from the oven, let cool to room temperature, chill in the refrigerator for an hour to overnight. You see any of those uh, key shredding sticking out over the top, just kind of push them in with your finger. It'll, it'll be okay. And you know, it'll give an interesting texture to the top of your pie. Then you spread the whipped cream over the top of the chilled key lime pie, sprinkle with a little more lime zest. Chill that till you're ready to serve it, or eat it right then. Enjoy yourself. This is Super Serious Key Lime Pie from Waspy Soda Pop and Food is for Eating. I'll see you next time, or you'll hear me, or both. Do you think that uh, he, he rushed that episode because his southern accent lapsed a few times? I've never heard Waspy Soda Pop. Well, we don't actually know where he's from. I know, well, this sounds pretty southern. Like a, I know, but, but where? Really, what part of the south do you think he's from? I think he's from South Dakota. The Ozarks. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Southern he's, L.A. I think what it is is he came from like somewhere in the south, like maybe Pensacola, Florida, and then he moved to uh, like Minnesota or something, and then it like, confused his ability but to Pensacola, talk. Pensacola, Florida, he'd probably have maybe a Cuban accent. Or in no. Pensacola? <laughs> 
You need this to work on your Florida geography. <laughs> what? What but about Apalachicola, Greg? I never heard his accent lapse. So Apalachicola. Coca Cola. <laughs> you put the lime in the coconut. Anyway. Yeah. Well, anyway, there there were no um, there was one fruit mentioned in that particular episode from uh, Waspy Soda Pop. Also, I never he really sold out. I never heard him like. He takes money from Safe Mart as a sponsor, yeah. and yet he was just like, "Oh, you can buy that at Safe Mart. Go to Safe Mart. Like, it's kind of yeah. selling out." Well, well you know, that's probably why he picked it as a sponsor is because he uses it himself. Okay, right. but I don't know. It's a well, little uh, whorish. Well, no one ever said that he was a uh, a model citizen. That's, that's true. That's, I mean, if you've ever tried to make one of his recipes, you'd figure that one out pretty fast. Well, I mean, that, that's another one where, it's like, we got to, like, put a warning. Like, if you make this, you might choke on some keys. <laughs> no. You know, you might die. There weren't any really good instructions on how to actually shred the keys, though. <laughs> it's like, what device do you use to shred keys? I think you could take one of those big, uh, like, like kind of basically the same tool they use to grind keys yeah and sure. just yeah. And just get, you know just take the what about a right cyclotron off. kind of well, hard to come by <laughs> my pop let's go to your local uh cyclotrons are us yeah <laughs> and they'll spin it so fast i mean and... greg i've been to your place your, your place could not handle that electrical <laughs> output you, no, you, but your refrigerator Waspy, would explode Wasp is proven uh, uh, through his cousins, especially that he has amazing access to shit. Like he, he has the like saints from the catacombs of Rome. He's been able to access to shred up in his recipes. So I think he could find the. I don't think he had actual access to the saints so much as access to the tombs where yeah. their bones were. There's nothing somehow, magical. Nothing magical going on there, Greg. That's pretty fucking hard to go into those things and steal a saints. Bones. Have you that, tried? Master criminal shit. Have you that's, tried, Greg? It might be no, simple. No, because I'm not a master criminal. I mean, that's they're guarding. I have, I have, I have no. I have a, I have a jawbone in my closet. Saint Paul. Saint Nicholas. <laughs> Saint John. Come on. I'm not messing around. He's got Saint Nicholas's jawbone in the back. Saint Christopher. He didn't. He uses it. it for smiting. The jaw. Yeah. <laughs> right. Chase people Chris. around the neighborhood and beat them with it. Smites his enemies with Saint Nicholas's jawbone. Get out of my way! I have a Saint Swithin's uh, umbilical cord, so it's like powdery dust. Yeah, you, you sprinkle that on toast. Or, yeah, it's, you know, it's magical. Yeah, it's a little coffee. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, I think right now is a good time to move into the uh, legal segment of the show. Um, mm. Brendan, you're going to have to uh, take a look in the email, see what people have sent. For, okay. for Greg for their questions because we got nothing from YouTube. Our viewers are merely viewers possibly or just uh, hanging Does around in the neighborhood. Sanchez didn't uh, step up to the plate? No, nah, no, nah, that's sad, but you know, that's the way it goes. Anyway, here we go. Yeah. He has an opinion, may not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question because he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Ask Greg. Greg. Ask Greg. <laughs> Ask Greg. Very good. <laughs> they call him Ask Greg. Ask Greg. So this is the part of the show, those of you who are just tuning in, and I'm sure there aren't any, um, where we hey. ask Greg a legal question to determine um, what the, uh, the, the response is so that you can go about your way knowing you've got legitimate... Horrible advice that you should not take because I don't have not a beard a anymore to stroke, so I can look sage. Rub your top of your head. Yeah, <laughs> and make a wish. That's yeah. actually uh, better. Uh, yeah, that's what you like. I wish I was on a different podcast. Rub your uh, <laughs> rub your armpit hair, Greg. No, don't do that. That's gross. No, it's stinky right now. Oh my yes. god! Please I don't know what stinky. I ate yesterday, but I've never had such stinky armpits in like. Okay, oh. getting to the emails. Here we go. <laughs> there. Ooh. It is. His nose is right, right in his armpit. That was fantastic. Okay, so uh, this is a fascinating tale. This is from, um, you know, um, Florida. Um, I know. Of course. Yeah. 
a true story, actually. This is not even, I didn't make this up. This is a true story. And one of the people are contacted our offices because of, you know, my extensive uh, network of idiot friends in Florida. Um, so, this is a divorce court story? No, no, no. That has to do with a murder. Why would you know what it is if he's reading it from the email group? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know if he was being coy and like, hey, Greg, I want advice about my uh, my situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, no, that's not that's not what's happening here. So let me get to the story. Uh, yes, or at least the legal question. Dear, dear Greg, um, I live in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, my neighbor. My neighbor and I are in a bit of a dispute. Um, I had a pet rooster named Big Roo. Big Roo was, uh, you know, he was a free Roman rooster, ran around the neighborhood. Um, my neighbor um, beat him to death with a stick yesterday. And uh, he said it was in self-defense. My question is, if the rooster was on his property when he hit him with the stick, uh, do I have a claim against him for animal cruelty uh, because it's a cruel thing to hit a rooster with a stick and that it probably wasn't in self-defense. I think he was just headed out for the the rooster. Well, he says that. Let me, that, let, me the, let me know what you think, Greg. Uh, so uh, let me clarify. Um, the, the neighbor killed the rooster when it was on his property. Mm-hmm. So there's that, um, what is it called? Stand down law? Stand your ground? Stand your ground, thank you. Well, you're the legal expert, Greg. You're supposed to know. Oh, I am, but I'm drunk. I'm extra drunk <laughs> on this episode. I'm kind of like, the, you know, co-counsel. But stand yeah. your ground is, yeah, stand your ground. Roosters, there's many instances in the history of uh, jurisprudence where roosters have attacked people, uh, performed bodily injury, and God damn it. Uh, but do you think but, but injury on them? I know you've got a, a lot of important words to stumble through. <laughs> <laughs> like injury. That's but a tough me, one. <laughs> let me let me let me see if I can move the conversation along so we don't get any more brain damage. Um, the the question is it, standard ground is definitely a, a factor here, but but it was a known fact. Everyone in the everyone in the neighborhood knew the rooster. The rooster traveled around quite a bit, uh, apparently. Yes. Uh, so the rooster had been in the neighbor's yard more than once. Um, and then the real question is, could you really consider a rooster to be an imminent threat? You know, like, say, an unarmed African-American kid coming home from, you know, 7-Eleven or Safe Mart. Yes, that a, is a valid threat. In yeah, I know that's a valid threat, but I'm saying yeah, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a rooster. Well, uh, I mean, like he, I said, his neck, you know, and... There have been reported cases of roosters pecking the eyes out of people and okay. leaving their brains through their mm -hmm. eye sockets. So maybe that day, that rooster, what was his name, Big Roo? Big Roo. Big Roo. Maybe Big Roo was surly that day. He was in a bad mood. Right. And he knew that neighbor didn't like him because he was crowing every morning and that neighbor was like, you woke me up again. Get rid of that rooster. And he just went off. You know, I mean, it just takes one bad day. Or right. things to happen. And maybe he attacked the guy and started pecking his eyes and he did what he had to do. So, so advice we, to the client. We'd have to go to trial. We'd have to mm -hmm. prove, like, hopefully get witnesses who saw the event. Right. You know, well, did the rooster attack the guy? Or did the guy just come at him with a stick because he was on his property? It still stands your ground, though. I could, If you came to my property and said, hey, Greg, I just want to stop by, I could shoot you and get off. Mm hmm. Well, sure, I could be like, certainly can. oh, I was scared. I didn't know who Brendan was. He was. I thought it was a threatening home invader. So I think it's legally this guy's, uh, you're the email guy is shit out of luck. All right. I'll let him know. Fair yeah. enough. Dear but I think we did get a country song out of this particular story. <laughs> Tell me the title, please. What's the country song? We brought you here today to hear the tale of Big Roo, the free-roaming rooster. 
Big Roo Free Roaming Rooster. Big Roo Free Roaming Rooster. He pecked the eyes out to get to the brains because that's what he likes to eat. Big Roo, Big Roo, Big Roo. <laughs> One day he roamed a little too freely. <laughs> That that is a that is a true story that actually happened. I watched the news clip on uh, on YouTube. It was but there's no footage of the actual attack. So no, that's... but they did. The the local Jacksonville news did have a picture of the rooster, not at that moment, but just sort of roostering around the the trailer park where this all. You know what I would have loved is like one of those roostering 90s. around. I would have loved those true crime uh, reenactment shows from the nineties. Oh. With bad actors, yeah, like a bad rooster actor, to be like, I'm <laughs> attacking you. Well, they could have a, they could have like a shadow, and it's like the hen. She's like, I miss Big Roo. <laughs> he killed my husband. That reminds me of the chicken lady from Kids in the Hall. I don't remember the chicken lady. Oh, you don't. She no. kept wanting to have sex with models. <laughs> she would but hire I... male prostitutes. <laughs> That's pretty, I, not, maybe I'm remembering this a little bit, but it was funny because the guy who actually killed the rooster with the stick was a hundred percent good old Florida boy because he's like, then the bastard called the chicken police. <laughs> so the, the cops actually came and arrested this guy. This guy spent a day in jail for hitting this rooster with what? a stick on his own property. On his own property. So he didn't claim that the rooster attacked him. He didn't say he did. that. No, he said that, that that's why he hit him with the stick. He said okay. the rooster came at him, like, attacked Self -defense. him. Self-defense. And he took the stick and was like, get out of here, rooster. And he hit him and he goes, must have been a lucky hit because he just dropped dead. Now, what he didn't do was he didn't, like, you know, pick the chicken's dead body up and take it to the guy and go, hey, I killed I the chicken. This. Sorry, he attacked me. He just How left it he in it. He just like, left it in a ditch. Like, here's five it. bucks to get one from the grocery store. Yeah, that's a free chicken. Why would you do that? Take it home and cook it. I don't know. I Stupid. think normally people eat hens, not roosters. I'm sure roosters are pretty tasty. They're a little tough, maybe. A little tougher. Are they? Mm. Well, I don't know, because they're more <laughs> masculine. You don't know. Muscular. All I know is that the song got more entertaining, knowing that it was killed in the end, the, the rooster, and whacked in the head by a good old boy. So oh, yeah. do you have a verse for that, Matt? <laughs> Not at the us. moment. <laughs> and then and from the out day. of the cabin, old Joe came with his killing stick. He saw Big Roo come and turned him. That's a word I just made up on the quick. Turned him. <laughs> turned him. <laughs> and it's, and then the he like hit that. Big Roo in the head with the Big Roo stick. Matt, it wasn't a cabin, it was a trailer. It was a visit. Yeah, I'm going to get my No, it was definitely a trailer. I saw it. I don't the remember trailer. details. I'm he like came a... out of his double wives <laughs> and defended his property. The, the the rooster had apparently attacked the man's the man, the killer. His he had attacked his father. His father must have been in his seventies, because this guy was like our age or older. And he had pictures for the media that he had printed off of his father's legs where the chicken had attacked him. So he was like trying to show the pictures, but he couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> oh, it was, it was classic. Just a, I'm, I thought you made this up. I was surprised to find out you were talking about a real story. <laughs> this is a real story. It happened like, I don't know, less than a week ago. Guys, I, uh, I think I told you this story before, but the first week of COVID, I saw it at work. I wasn't, you know, quarantined. I had to go to work because I was fast food worker. You know? And the streets were empty. The crows took over. I swear to God, every day I'd walk to work, just like streets would be filled with like um, a murder of crows, just like eating some bread that someone left. And the first week, I guess there was a maybe a baby crow born, and they started freaking out when I came within a block of a certain area on my way to work. They were just like, gah, gah, gah. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? I'm just wow. walking down the street. And I, maybe he was a baby in the nest, and that, that's how they protect him. And then when I got closer, fucking a crow fucking died by me twice. I came with that foot of my head. It was scary as fuck. There he I'm was. I'm closing on his biggest chickens. Walking down the street. You didn't have your crow When stick, all of though. a sudden, the crow wanted something to eat. Like hey, the crow's Woody on Nelson Greg's today. head. He's going to attack him today. It's you a murder of crows. Greg's going to die today. 
Hey, you hey, they're the crow. <laughs> you know why I did not like take a stick and attack that crow? Because crows are fucking smart and they remember. Oh, I yeah. would never fuck with a crow. No matter what a crow does to you, if it dive bombs your head, just be like, sorry, and run across the street. Because you will be harassed by every crow in the neighborhood for years to come. All I know is that it's clip goes into the highlight reel for years to come. It's good advice. That's Thank you. I want to... <laughs> This is like a public service announcement. Like, don't fuck with crows. Ever. No matter how shitty they are. The crows are coming to get you. Just run. Don't, like, swat at them. Don't be aware of lions or tigers or bears. Be well, aware of no the crows. Well, there's no lions and tigers and bears in Portland, Matt. But we have crows. They could be if everybody was gone. They could. There could be if, you know, the organization I was pimping earlier gets its way. There could be several packs of wolves. Wait. Right. Because One they're going to bring wolves, wolves to per Portland. Town. They're going to bring, yeah, they're going to bring packs of wolves to every major U.S. city. That's you know, I that's... love wolves ever since I was a little kid. Oh, every you're going to really love wolves. them when they're running through your neighborhood. Let me tell you. <laughs> but I really don't want them living with me. I love them. Oh from no, that's afar. the whole point. That's the whole point. Yeah. The point is that they will live with you, Greg. It's time to. I'm just saying, it's time for the the homeless population in Portland. It's time to level up, guys. You know, you've <laughs> sort of mastered whatever this bullshit thing you're doing is. If we had wolves, now you've got a predator. You know, it's a whole <laughs> new game. It's a whole new thing. You're not just cutting down trees in some random lot, you know, in whatever, stealing cars. No, no, now you've got something that's coming to get you. I think it'd be great. Pax <laughs> wolves fighting the off crows. the meth population. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe that's a good reason. It's like the purge. It's like, yeah. let's bring back wolves to, like, weed out the poor, homeless, defenseless people. Right. We're not walls. And then, and then what the general population does is you're just instructed to carry with you at all times a, a, some kind of T-bone or filet of some sort of steak. And you just carry that with you at all times. Um, yeah. Kind of like your mask and your vax card. You just have your, your meat. And if the wolves come, you just chuck the meat and then they'll run to the meat and then you can get away. So that's that's how you handle it yourself. But except for the other pack that comes for you, because you still smell like the meat that you checked at the other pack of wolves. Well, you got a minute, you know, yeah. you got some time. Okay. But I think homeless people can't really afford a steak. They that's can, why. <laughs> that's the. That's isn't that the interesting? But they place. can't afford the remains of the other homeless people that were attacked by the wolves. They could do that, like have a hand or an arm, or a forearm of one of their guys who got killed, and be like, "I'll throw that." They have like a loose pancreas on their belt. Yeah, whatever. I, a liver. I sent a, I sent a picture of the homeless camp across from the plaid pantry where I'm staying, and uh, to to my friend, and he said, "Are you on set at like The Walking Dead?" <laughs> oh, this is across the street from from my uh, corner store. He's like, "So when you go get beer, that's?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is like a movie set over there." You're making new friends since you moved to It's all over Portland. Fantastic. Okay, once again, I'm going to be Pinko Pedix and just be like... I Pinko Pedix? Who... Yeah. Pinko right, Pedix. Wait, let me highlight your face then. All right, go ahead. Yeah, but, you know, like, I, I was just driving to lunch with a friend uh, two days ago, three days ago, uh -huh. and he was just commenting so, like, negatively about, like, look at this fucking shit. And I'm like, well, there's homeless people. They, may, they found a little nook that they could live in. Like, why are you going to give them shit about it? It's like better than just walking around downtown, you know, with no tent. It's like there's a lot of homeless people after COVID. Yeah. And it's like, well, I, I don't think there's a lot of homeless people. Before. Here's what needs to happen. And this is coming from, from tangerine, tangerine Brendan. Tangerine Brendan. Because you're not a pinko, you're orange. <laughs> I'm orange oh, somehow. Purple. You're like one of the roundheads from uh, the Civil War in uh, Great Britain. Yes. Well, the simple simple solution to the homeless problem is build houses. Wolves. Well, wolves is it's a short-term solution, but the ones that survive, build them a house. They, they've actually done that. Yeah, and, uh, has there have been of issues. Too. There have been issues with that particular uh, solution we built as a well. Lot of low it, houses it wasn't cause... an issue in the state of Mississippi. It wasn't an issue in... Scandinavia where they did yeah, it. Because you them. don't have Portland's um, political system there. Well, it, once again, maybe it's, you know, it's partially the wolves. Maybe 
you don't allow politicians to buy meat uh, on the weekends. <laughs> so anytime we can train I, the crows to be more deadly. Anytime oh, politicians anytime are local, not allowed to have meat on weekends. They're all vegan. weekends. Yeah, because now if they're outside, they're also a target potentially. So they either need to stay in, uh, get rid of the wolves, but they're not going to be able to get rid of the wolves. This could be hugely popular. Then they're going to have to solve the homeless problem. That's the only. That's the only option. So if okay, a homeless I, person is living in a tiny house, are they a fruit, a nut, or a seed? I think they're a seed because they're a, a tiny little fruit inside of a hard shell. Is that a seed? I think I have a better solution until we get wolves in Portland, yes. which I can't wait. I'm crossing my fingers. We're we're wolves, back we already have coyotes. I don't know that we need wolves. But this is what we have to do. What we do is we take the crows and we, we hire this big movie theater auditorium. We show them Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. And they're, uh, and they're smart enough that they'll be like... It comes back to the crows, doesn't it? Yeah, the crows weaponized, are scary. Weaponized the crows. crows are terrifying me. I'm terrified of crows. What if the crows all had little lasers on their heads, Greg? Oh my god, that's my nightmare. <laughs> Fucking cybernetic parts. That's your nightmare. That's nano bites in their blood. But you know, like we train that we we show the crows the birds and say, guys, you could hurt us a lot more. You just don't. You do show it. the crows the birds. Yeah, by Alfred Hitchcock. But you show the crows the birds. Yeah. We're okay. showing the birds the birds. We're kind of back into that whole... Is we rent out a whole a movie bird. theater. We rent the out movie theaters. And you bring in says, all of the crows to watch the movie The Birds. And they sit in their yeah. little chairs and then we give them popcorn and sodas and They'd whatever. they love that. Jujubes. Oh, and uh, sorry to be anti-Semitic there. I, I don't know if that's canceled. Jujubes. That's, that's anti-Semitic bees, actually. <laughs> yes. Those and then we... Jujubes. And the crows will learn. They'll be like, hey, we never thought that we could do that. We never tried we could actually really hurt these fuckers we could like peck their eyes out and shit. <laughs> which right. crows don't really do they just scare you every now and then i got you all right well on that note it's time to end off with our final segment for the show so that uh brendan can tell us exactly <laughs> what uh of what is all about. he's gonna really give us the, the last word on fruits nuts and seeds and stuff so yeah this is the last word with Brendan Haggerty in Uganda Nero. Brutality. Sip. Beep a deep a doop. Beep a deep a So. The Swedish chef from the Muppets doing that intro. I don't know why that is, but. All right, here we go. Okay, so uh, we've talked a lot about this subject, and I think it really comes down to two simple things. One, uh, botanists, uh, plant doctors, scientists, people really just need to fucking fuck off. Take a vacation or develop a new hobby or pastime or get involved in a good organization like Races for Refugees or Wolves for Across the Nation. But they're spending their time recategorizing things that have already been categorized into other subcategories. And any self-respecting you know, kind of semi-OCD person just can't deal with it, which was obviously why this was the topic of the show, given the mental state of the three of us. But what food, the second point is what food should be, or what, how this all breaks down is what we need. Vegetables and fruits are very easy for us to understand. No one needed anyone to figure out the difference between a banana and a strawberry versus a cash. No, they're nuts, they're fruits, they're berries, they're whatever. Whatever we want to call them, either locally, culturally, whatever. So um, this is a time when science needs to just take a chill pill and take up knitting because you're not actually making anyone's life any better. You know what they'll do? They'll take up knitting and then they'll be like, oh, this cross stitch is actually crochet. <laughs> oh. At least they won't and be then, talking yeah. about my food or non-food. Right, and then you get into embroidery, and then it's a whole different ball of wax. Oh, my God. Don't even start me on that shit. I'm just I'm I will saying, go on for an hour about embroidery versus crochet. I'm sticking with my... Since a kid, there's meat and there's everything else. <laughs> right. Lamp posts. Yep. Fishing poles. Now, do you well, agree with Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec that fish Alpo. is really just a vegetable? No, fish I don't agree with that. Meat. No, I don't agree with that. Fish is the best. It's just... I like fish. Seafood is expensive, unfortunately. That's true, it can be. 
Yeah. Definitely be expensive. Definitely more expensive than chickens, which are more expensive these days. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a chicken shortage. I, we probably need to address the growing chicken crisis. After they took out Big Roo, it was that ruined everything. Roo. There's everything. a there's an uprising. It's occurring. Roo was just, yeah. Roo was like the Malcolm X of chickens in Florida. Yeah, chickens have been emboldened <laughs> and they're attacking people and getting he's killed. The, he's, the the, stand, he's the George Floyd for it's chickens. Part of the chicken panthers. Chicken lives matter, damn it. <laughs> Not to me. No, yeah, well. Well, we know see, what you are. You're just a fascist. You're a chicken hater. You're a chicken fascist is what you are. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm a chicken Nazi. I'm, I'm never going to eat chicken again. You're a I'm chicken eating, cannibal. I'm only eating beef. Screw the cows. Screw. Well, try not to because I believe that's illegal. All right, well. That, that's illegal in Oregon? Eating cows? If you're, is screw, if you're screwing cows, yes. Oh, screw cows. Is that legal? Is bestiality illegal? In, in I'm in asking Oregon? for a friend. <laughs> is that illegal? Yeah, I'm, I'm just I friend. just wanted to know. I, I had a friend who had a concern. About an incident that involved a lot of tequila. And what's the age of consent of fucking a cow? Like, is it okay to fuck a cow as a year old or eight months old? When it's I no mean, longer veal, Greg, then it's okay. I, I think <laughs> it, it, it has to be, I think the key is that it has to be, you know, sexually active as a cow. Yeah. It I has to know the difference cousin. between uh, milk and semen. It has to know the difference between that, Greg. <laughs> I'm well, still we just, there we go. Now we're I'm off. Now we're off YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, I put, I have my breakfast cereal. And I, YouTube is going to use this transcribing it. thing and get to that sentence and go, nope. <laughs> All right, well, this has been the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker, and our client for today has been, that's nuts, you fruit. And we'll be back uh, next week, more than likely. In two yeah. weeks, we will have a comedian as a guest. His name is... Uh, I can't remember his name, but he'll be here. It's in two weeks. Guy. In two weeks, we'll have a guest, yes. So next week, we have to come just make up something. To talk next about. week, we'll have another topic of discussion that is our client. And I'm sure it'll Canada. be just as riveting as a discussion about fruits, nuts, and seeds. <laughs> Your consultation with the law offices of Quiddle, Squabble, and Picker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblah.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out! Get out!